friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm a life model decoy of Annalise, and this is Romeo, my male Doomerals boa. Isn't he handsome? Last week, I talked about how awesome Doomerals boas are and why they make such great pets. In that video, I referenced that I cohab Romeo and his mate Tassara, and I've received some interesting comments on the evils of cohabbing over the past year and a half or so. Today, I will be explaining how and why I made this controversial to some decision. Let's get to it. Romeo are a breeding pair that are cohabbed pretty much all the time except for feeding day. When we first tried to pair them for breeding more than two years ago, we followed instructions online about breeding doomerals, pairing them for a few weeks, then separating them, then putting them back together again, and then taking them apart and on and on through the breeding season. I outlined this plan in this video when we first paired them together. It's too cringy for me to go back and watch, but it's there if you want to check it out at your own risk. While they seemed more than content to share the space with each other, Romeo never even looked remotely interested, and we never saw them look up. Well, okay, there, there were a couple of like half-hearted attempts at something that looked like it might be breeding behavior if Romeo had any idea which end of Tassara he should be focusing on, but overall nothing happened. So after a few months of no success, I reached out to some Doomerals breeders about what we should do or if we were doing anything wrong. We got some suggestions to leave some urates in the enclosure, leave bits of Romeo's shed in there, or even better, get another male shed and put that in. Basically trick Romeo into thinking that another dude was around and that might awaken something in him. But none of those suggestions did anything. And we figured the project was a bust. But at an expo in Toronto a while back, someone who bred Doomerals in the past suggested just leaving them together year round. Another breeder in the US shortly after also suggested the same, and after some digging, I also found some other references to this on online forums. Here's the logic behind this. Doomerals boa males are generally significantly smaller than the females. Apparently, Doomerals boa breeding works best with a small male and a large female, which is actually pretty common for a lot of snake species. Tassara and Romeo are both just over six and a half feet long and each weigh roughly 20 pounds. Not an uncommonly big size for a female like Tassara, but for a male, Romeo is a big fella and big male Doomerals apparently make very lazy breeders. The best chance for success for a breeding project would be to just replace Romeo outright with a smaller male, which is not an option. This is Romeo's home and we love him and he's not going anywhere. And we also didn't want to add a third adult Doomerals. Alternatively, because they were the same size, we could adopt the common practice of what old school Doomerals breeders did back in the day and just leave them together all the time. We were told that based on Romeo's size, it would be safe, and if the stars aligned in just the right way and the mood randomly did happen to hit Romeo, then having Tassara right there would increase the chance of locking up, if she was receptive. It was still a long shot that they would ever breed, but we tried leaving them together to see what would happen. I mean, we had nothing to lose and maybe babies to gain. When I share pictures or videos of these guys together, most of the comments are positive. They're gorgeous and so cute together, right? Occasionally, I get an understandable question asking about cohabbing, which I'm happy to address, but sometimes the tone is distinctively snarky with questions about why they are together or comments along the lines of After an explanation, I often begrudgingly get permission to continue keeping them together as long as it's for breeding, but they don't really like to see boas together. It's weird that that particular phrasing or something similar has popped up multiple times. I don't like seeing cohab boas, not that's not the best practice, not that could be dangerous. It's I don't like that. Is that weird or is it just me? I get that there are folks who don't research or care about what's best for their reptiles and one might feel inclined to call that out, but even a cursory glance at my Instagram or YouTube should reveal what kind of keeper I am. And why do they think that I should be concerned with what they like to see? You, you know what? There's another video coming up about diverging from care guides. I'm, I might save this rant for that. 
But right now, I want to say a quick thanks to these folks here. These are my patrons on Patreon, and it's thanks to them that I can bring you videos like this one. One of the perks my patrons get is the chance to have their question answered in a video. Today's question comes from Knat44, and they ask... What? You, you were the one who chose the question. I don't know what it is. What is it? You had to create an army of reptiles in which to achieve world domination. Which five would be your top picks? Okay. Um, Komodo dragons and Megalania. So two. King Cobra. Um, Canada geese and Titanoboa. Two of those are extinct. You can't bring animals back from the dead. Current animals. I interpreted it as any reptile, no. but fine. Well then, instead of uh, Megalania and Titanoboa, I would have um, probably saltwater crocodiles and, well, peregrine falcons. Okay. If you want to check out the other perks my patrons get, help support my channel and animals, or see the lengthy conversation about my battle plans for my army of reptiles that won't make the cut here, but will be posted there, head on over to patreon.com slash allcanadianreptilegirl. Thanks! Where was I? Right, co-having Doomroll's fellows. Tassara and Romeo will pretty regularly be all cozied up together, and it's not because they're competing for resources. Their enclosure has enough spots in each temperature zone that they could easily stay apart, and they do if they feel like it. And when they want to cuddle, they do that too. This extends to outside time as well. I can put these guys at opposite ends of my backyard and they will immediately seek each other out. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Romeo does seem willing to travel farther to be reunited, but they both scope up until they spot each other and then start moving towards each other. Once together, they stop and nap the afternoon away side by side. Every single time. When I take one of them out for any real length of time, the other often starts pacing the enclosure and then parks themselves staring out the door I took the snake out of until they are returned. There are three doors on their enclosure, by the way. They display a certain degree of being unsettled when they were apart. So, while it seemed that they preferred to be together, there was no hint of any real breeding behavior. We had pretty much chalked it up to a lost cause. Until, after more than a year and a half of full cohabbing, we started noticing some strange things about Tassara around early to mid-June. She looked like she might be a little thicker in her back half, but maybe not really. Her color started getting darker and she started hanging out a lot more on the hot side. She was coiling up differently too, with her head tucked in the middle and with her tail on the outside, opposite of her usual position where her tail is on the inside and her head's on the outside. And she also kind of tucked her tail under herself. She was also doing some weird sniffing behavior along her body. Every morning, we open up the tank to give each of them a little pet and some scritches, which they normally don't object to, but Tassara kind of started shoving our hands away when we went to pet her. Pretty aggressively, too. So something was up. Our friend Cody said that this behavior was suggestive of Tassara possibly being gravid and we might have babies soon. He said if she was, she was probably waiting for a rainy day to give birth, which apparently a lot of boas do in the wild and captivity. That was news to me. Anyway, wouldn't you know it, on a stormy, wet day at the very end of June, Tassara gave birth to a small clutch of five baby Doomrolls boas. What's going on, Annalise? Uh, Tassara just had babies. <laughs> we honestly didn't even think. We were like, oh, she might, maybe, maybe a little bit, but then mom went in to feed um, uh, Night Monkey, which is right beside the boas, and she looked in, and there was a little baby. Are you excited? I had a baby snake take its first breath in my hand not 10 minutes ago. So yeah. Pretty excited. Pretty excited. Sadly, one didn't make it through the night, but we still have four healthy, adorable little boas. Do you want to see them? Duh. Of course you do. Hang on. Look how cute they are. They're so little. Just how small they are compared to how big their parents are just blows my mind. Oh, and their colors, they're insane. This one looks legitimately pink and red, like actual pink. Um, this one 
is looks a lot like Romeo in coloration, whereas um, this this one looks a lot like Tassara. This one is very dark, is probably the darkest out of them all, and is bitey. Look how big they are! Even though they're small, they're quite big. They've grown a bit. They're so curious. They don't stop moving. Ever. This one bit mom in the face. This is her baby. This is her favorite. And it bit her in the face. I'm not commenting. See. A little after the bebes were born, we removed Romeo from the enclosure and expected to have them in separate homes for about 18 months until it was time to breed to Sarah again, if we wanted. But the separation, it did not go great. Both were very agitated and would not settle down. Romeo in particular did a lot of pacing. For a lazy and sedentary snake, he was active for hours at a time. And he's the lazier of the two. Tassara was not nearly as restless, but she was still very touchy and jumpy, although giving birth might have factored in there. Oh, she has no idea if the Tola Bebe can take on its mother, or its mother's mother. It was apparent that they were both stressed. In fact, both of them refused their meals after being separated, twice. I'll say that again. Both boas refused two meals. If you know boas, you know. After about two weeks with only a little bit of improvement, we put them back together to see what would happen. They both immediately slid up next to each other and stopped for a minute and then moved to their comfy spots in the tank and went to sleep and didn't move for about a day. Basically, they returned to their normal behavior. Offered food a couple days later, they both ate. We separate them for feeding, by the way. I mentioned that earlier, but I want to say it again. It looked like things were back to normal. I've been very focused on monitoring their behavior, and if it seems that at some point down the road they have soured on each other, Whammy! they're separated. But for now, staying together is what they prefer. Another thing I'm watching for is a mating behavior, or Romeo's idea of mating behavior. Having just given birth, we don't want Tassara to get gravid again for at least a year, preferably a year and a half. Growing babies is a lot of work and I don't want to overtax her body. Given Romeo's size and reluctance to live up to his namesake, we've been told that it is unlikely he's going to make a move for a long time, if at all. Having these babies was a long shot after all. Her small clutch size also mitigates the stress to her if the one in a million chance of her getting gravid again in the next 12 to 18 months actually happens. So we should be okay there, but we are watching for signs that Romeo is feeling frisky. I want to be super clear on this. See this? This is my serious face. I am not saying that co-having Dumeril's boas is how we should be keeping them, and that you could or should keep yours together. I co-have mine and keep them this way for breeding initially, and now because it seems that being apart is actually stressful to them. But keeping Dumeril's boas solitary is the current established best practice. The safest thing is to keep your Dumeril's boas separately in their own enclosures. These animals can hurt each other badly if something goes wrong. I know someone who had both his Dumeril's boas out for photos like he's done many times before, and one just bit the other out of the blue. This is a legitimate risk of cohabbing. Do your research and read your snakes and make the best choices for them. Not for convenience, cost, or space, or because you really like the way mine look all cuddled up and it's so cute and oh, you want them to be friends. Nah, -uh. I and my family believe the effects of lowering the stress they displayed when apart is worth the risk of keeping them together. This is based on research and an extensive amount of observation on my two snakes. They clearly have an affinity for each other and derive some kind of comfort, familiarity, or security from each other's presence. So I'm gonna foster that for as long as it is safe to do so. I can't stress this enough, this is good for these boas in these conditions for now. Your situation is completely different and you should not base your care on the behavior you see in some random YouTube video, okay? Do you think that was well said, Romeo? Their behavior is pretty cool and was completely unexpected, but not without some precedence in nature. I'm not gonna go too deep into this because I will be talking about it in a couple of upcoming videos. Hit that notification bell to get alerted to those. As we study snakes in the wild, we're seeing more and more behavior that suggests some are not quite as solitary as we thought. It's common knowledge that garter snakes are social, but why only them? Some think that rattlesnakes are as well, at least some of them, some of the time. 
Madagascar hognose snakes share dens and display social behavior. Snakes in the Samophiani genus exhibit grooming and gift-giving behavior. They are one of the few snake species that secrete some stuff that they rub on each other. And Cuban boas have recently been observed displaying coordinated pack hunting behavior around bat caves. So is it that much of a stretch to think that there might be more social or socially cooperative snakes and reptiles out there? Or at least ones that are less solitary than we think? I don't think so and I'm excited to learn more. Well, that's it for today. What do you think of the idea that snakes might be less solitary than we thought? This aspect of snake behavior is fascinating to me. Let me know if it's a topic you'd like me to explore in detail in a future video. Thanks for watching, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and most importantly, remember to nurture all nature. Bye! What are you doing? No, 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 no. Back up. How much? Like just a little bit. That's why I was doing little, not... Words, Dad. Use words. Side two.